Uh, everyone, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we did have a quorum, and hopefully some others will be coming in. I know Yolanda Harper uh, could not be here tonight. She uh, is taking a trip, and then Marion Frias did uh, text me earlier. She's got strep throat, so we said stay away. <laughs> we love you, but we understand. So. Um, I want to thank you all. Uh, so I'm going to go to line two on opening remarks. You know, we've had a long journey over the last year and a half, but I want to thank you all for your commitment, your time, your energy, uh, your expertise in helping us to get here to this point uh, where we'll be reviewing the final recommendations to go to council. Uh, I want to turn it over to Lily, see if you have any opinion. Well, I would just say, cool, Lily, it's, it's been a long journey, and, you know, we've stuck with it. And uh, I want to thank all of you for doing so. Hopefully we'll get some good results. Yeah. On December 13th, 1999, with the day I was ordained, there was a, I had to pick a, a verse to go on it. And I picked Psalm 119, verse 35, that says, uh, God, guide me on the right path, for the path of your means to it, because that is the path I have chosen. And then, you know, it, it, it set me off a path. I said the same thing on July 17th, 2017. Because that was the first co-chairs meeting. God guide me on the right path because this is a path of equality that we have chosen. And I say it today as well because this is the path that we're trying to set the city on. And I have to say, I felt blessed being ordained. I felt blessed. Uh, at our first chair co-chairs uh, co meeting, and today I not only feel blessed, but I feel thankful, thankful for all of you uh, who, you know, have been able to work with and become friends with. And truly, I think God has put us on this path, and I thank God. I thank God personally that I've been able to walk down it with all of you. So thank you very much. Usually I just say amen to him, <laughs> which I do, but I'll, I'll add a couple of things. Because uh, I noticed that the mayor is here, and uh, she leaned on me a bit. <laughs> I never do that. Oh, you always do that. Uh, she leaned on me a bit to be on this, this task force. Uh, because I, you know, as you all know, I, I had doubts. Uh, but I, I, I want to thank you, Mayor, number one, for having the vision to do this. And it's been a journey. As I said, it's been a long journey. Uh, but as, as the folk in my church would say, but he didn't bring me this far to leave. And I kept telling people, and you quoted somebody, and I, I'll quote Frederick Douglass, who said, for there is no struggle, there is no progress. For power concedes nothing without demand. And nothing we're doing here is a demand, but we do have recommendations. And uh, what I would say to David Cook, who also twisted my arm a bit, uh, <laughs> both of you, the mayor and the city manager, depending on what we do here tonight, will have a responsibility that I hope that the, the community holds you to. Not that we're, as I say, we're not demanding anything. We're making recommendations as you ask us to make. But if nothing comes of this, if nothing comes of this, I'm not saying you have to implement everything we suggest, but if nothing comes of this, uh, this city will have failed. Uh, we would have failed. And I'm just saying, for the record, uh, I'm, I'm ready to get through with it. I really am. Uh, tell us how you feel. Tell us how you feel. Tell us how you feel. Because I've got old. Because I'm, I'm the same age as the mayor, just in case y'all didn't know. I've got old, and I would love to see something change in the city before I leave it. And I'm through. Well, and, and I think we as co-chairs have said that this is the beginning for the city to work to bring and bridge our communities together. So. Uh, next on our agenda is remarks from the mayor and our city manager. So, Mayor Price, I'd like to you. Sure. This is a big U shape you have. <laughs> I'll just go down there, though, because I, I, I like to look people in the eye when I'm talking to them. You can come in the middle, Mayor. <laughs> they can hear you. But I'm not going all the way to the end of the podium. That's 
that's too far down, and I rarely get accused of having a local blown up voice that you can't hear. <laughs> I can't lean on people. That's what he's talking about, he said. You know, really, I just want to thank all of you. What you've done, and you've done a yeoman's job of working on this. And I did indeed lead um, most of your co-chairs to do this job, and I particularly David and I leaned on Bob Ray, and, and everybody, after we explained really what we wanted, came along very willingly and was willing to do it. I don't think any of you, co-chairs or any of you members, realized it was going to be as long a journey as it has been. But it's a very worthwhile and truly has just been an incredible journey. And, and as Bob Ray said, and we all know, if we don't do something with us, then shame on all of us. Because I think that we got to a place where we were doing what we've always done. And you know that the definition of insanity, just keep doing what you've always done and get the same results. And I don't think that we're to that point in Fort Worth. I think your work, you set him up off the sidelines as a citizen who really cares, who's willing to tackle the tough issues, has said an incredible amount about where we go. I think your recommendations are going to be taken very seriously by council. I know they will. I don't think. I know they will. I know David and staff will take them back, bring them forward to us with a chance for people to have to give and take. Obviously, there will be some on council who don't want to accept them all. There will be some who want every one of them. But I think that we can come to a great working relationship on them. So much of what you're recommending has already been done or is in the process of being started. Early childhood education is in a great spot. We are really beginning to move forward. And stay tuned. This year, there's going to be a couple of really exciting announcements on them early childhood education, where we are, particularly in a couple of communities that really are deserts for child care, quality child care, not just child care, quality child care. I think our Healthy City Initiative has come a long way. We had the pleasure this weekend announcing that we got our Blue Zone certification. And somebody said, why is that such a big deal? <laughs> seen the statistics, it's really a big deal because when we started our Blue Zones work, Gallup comes in and they survey every city, every major city every year anyway on well-being index and have for 10 or 15 years. And when they surveyed us five years ago, Fort Worth was number 185 out of 190 cities on the low end of the totem pole. We scored almost at the bottom of not healthy communities. And I'm proud to say this year's Gallup Wellbeing Study showed we were at number 58. And our largest gains have been made in the Stop 6 Poly area and the near and north side, our lower income areas. And really, they were the areas we thought we were going to have to really push the hardest and that we had made the most gains in those areas. So we're starting well, on, and I'm pleased that that's one of your recommendations to work on healthy communities. Our affordable housing piece. Like all cities, we're way behind on affordable housing. Rent, everything else got ahead of everyone. We've got some major solutions. We've been working very closely with our partners at HUD and Tarrant Housing and several other to see how we can. And our new recommendations, every one of our incentive programs will have some look at affordable housing to try to incentivize developers to work on that. Uh, we're working on mass transit. We commissioned, you know, several months ago an update with NIGAR consultants who did Trinity Metro study to see what can we do that's innovative. We put how much in the budget this year, David? About a million. About a million for innovation and transportation. You have to get people interested in it. You have to get them on transit. But you have to make it easy for them to use. And we love that you're implementing that. And our economic development strategy, I think, has many great things that will help us on it. I know the civilian oversight of the police department is one of the ones that you have really wrestled with. I think your recommendation to look at this and study, see where the best practices are, but to really do something goes a long way. I think I know council will take a look at that and will work on that. The redistricting process, a lot of talk already going on about that. What's the best process to handle on that? But I do think that at some point you simply have to have citizen input. 
probably maybe, maybe not full control, but at least a partial plan where people do have some input on it. But we take very seriously your work, and I think we owe it to the citizens for them to have a chance to see. It's unfortunate that the incidents that led to your creation happen, but on the good side, oftentimes God puts things in our way that we don't want to deal with, that we don't want to see, and he's going to force you to open your eyes and take a hard look at them. And I think that's what this community has done. And I think we're a city of compassion, a city who comes together when an issue is raised, and this is an issue that we can address. No child's zip code should determine their future. Walter's heard me say that a dozen times. He said it too. No adult should struggle with their past indiscretions, whatever, or the fact that they didn't grow up in an area where they've had the advantages that some of us had. It's up to us to try to work on all of those and really make an effort. And I know that your recommendations are going to go a long way towards helping with that. We already have an idea on how we may move forward with a group to begin to implement that. I don't want to discuss it yet, but we will discuss it with y'all at some point, but I've got some things working, and David's aware of that, Fernando, too, of what we might do to reconstitute some things and get a group who is solely responsible for implementing your plan here and for seeing that it's equitable for all. So, mostly, thank you. I know this has not been easy work. I know you've taken hours of testimony. I sat through council meetings that last till 12 and 12.30. I can imagine doing it over and over where you've had meetings that went two or three hours or more, maybe four, and ran, and not always happy people in front of you. And you didn't sign on just for the good times. You signed on for the better of our community. And we are eternally grateful for that and looking forward to accepting the report and seeing how we begin to work about implementing that. So thank you all. I'm not going to get to stay with you because I've got to go to a neighborhood meeting and I've got to go do a ribbon cutting to the North Side Health Community Center, which is another big plus in a community that doesn't have health care access. We're opening Rosa knows where it is, a new health care clinic there tonight. And it's great. But thank you all. Questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. So you can do the Spanish version. <laughs> so let me add on to that a little bit. First, it is the thank you for the time. The time is time out of the valuable time. So the time you committed to this effort is truly tremendous. Yes, we twisted his arm. And for the rest of them, I just thank him every time we saw him. Right? Because I know the again the time commitment to is involved in the word that wasn't used was we said long journey. Let me throw in difficult. Right? So we asked you to do something that was very difficult. Go out into our community and talk about race and culture. Identifying disparities or inequities that might exist in the city and then recommend how we're going to change some of those. That's not an easy task. The whole conversation about race and culture, right off the bat, that's not an easy conversation. When you agree. Right? And then we ask you to do that throughout our community and identify those things and then recommend to us what we ought to change so that we can make a different future than what the current state of Fort Worth looks like. And there are so many positive things about the city of Fort Worth that we need to keep doing. And there are perhaps some things we need to take a very hard look at the city of Fort Worth and say, hey, are we going to go about changing those things so that the future can be different than our current state? So I've read the recommendations. What I appreciate that is in those recommendations is really an identification using data of what some of the disparities are, right? It's hard to argue with data when you say there are parts of the city, whether it's affordable housing, whether it's public health, whether it's education, whether it's economic development or criminal justice, there's some data that shows that we have some real disparities or inequities in the city and we don't, you know, you look at the data, we don't want that to continue, right? So then the question is, well, what are we going to do then 
differently to change. So there are recommendations in there that suggest how we should do that. We are going to take that very seriously, as you heard the mayor talk about, uh, because there are some things we definitely need to change. Some will create more conversation than others, no doubt. But starting with data on how we have disparities and inequities in the city that we need to address makes it a little bit easier to deal with. Because you deal with it then on a, I won't make it an impassion, but it's on data and we need to change some of those things. The other thing that I recommend reading in there, it had the city manager will do, it had the city manager will do it. Right? And then there's a date. By such and such, the city manager will fill in the blank. Yeah. And I read that stuff. <laughs> uh, and I take that very seriously. Right? We will take those recommendations. Actually, first, I don't want to get ahead of it. We look forward to receiving the report on the city's work. And then we will take it very seriously and have a a uh, plan in place to move those things forward. Some can be moved fairly quickly. I think you can tell which ones might those be. And some might take a little more conversation, a little more discussion, but every single one of those recommendations will be taken seriously uh, and we'll have some mechanism to be able to report that back to you and to the community at large because we really owe this to the community at large. You were the spokespersons I think for the community to bring the recommendations to us. But really what I want to uh, do first and foremost, foremost is thank you for the time because I know the time commitment was great and I know the effort that everybody put in is uh, meaningful and again we look forward to seeing you on December 4th. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Next on our agenda is the approval of minutes from October the 15th. Has everyone had a chance to review those? I have a motion to accept. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, now, number five review and approval of final recommendations. Thank you very much. If I could ask you to turn your attention to tab one of the binder, it contains two items. It contains a one-page summary of committee revisions to the September 24th draft and recommendations of the task force. You'll recall at your last meeting, you decided to proceed with the September 24th draft and review that draft with respect to all the public comments that we received in the open house meetings. And consequently, all the committees reconvened and discussed their recommendations again in detail with respect to those public comments. And what you see at the front of tab one and also on the screen uh, is a summary of revisions from all the committees. I think I can say in general, that uh, the revisions are, are relatively minor uh, in scope, uh, but I think it'd be worthwhile to uh, go through them uh, one by one so that everyone's uh, well acquainted with them. Of uh, particular significance uh, is uh, the Criminal Justice Committee. Uh, and uh, as I summarize these items, if the committee chairs or committee members wish to elaborate or comment, that that would be uh, perfectly appropriate. Uh, the committee uh, wanted to specify a preference to create a civilian review board among the different uh, models of civilian oversight, but to provide information about the other models of civilian oversight, uh, so as to recognize that it's one of several uh, which uh, the city may wish to consider, but the task force does express a preference for the civilian review board uh, model. Uh, we also added or reinstated arrest data uh, as a measure of the civilian review board's effectiveness. Uh, Todd, do you want to add anything? I think I'm ready this to yield. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. I can't believe that. <laughs> I have a question of you. You changed the title from oversight to review. 
The title is still civilian oversight. Title is still civilian oversight. Okay. But it, within the body of that uh, section, it, it, it makes specific reference to the civilian review <laughs> as the preferred model. Uh, in respect to economic development, the, the committee had no changes. Uh, Charles, uh, uh, they were satisfied that uh, uh, the public comments did not warrant uh, and any changes uh, in the recommendations. The Education Committee changed uh, two of the recommendations, uh, service learning and civic engagement, explaining how civic engagement uh, can uh, result in academics and success, uh, and changed the, the title uh, of the uh, walking centers, high school walking centers, to college and career centers, so as to provide a greater clarity and to rebrand the, the, the GO centers, uh, which currently exist, uh, as college career centers to clarify their purpose and success measures. So, so Bob, uh, Sarah, any comments? No, uh, under governance, so the governance committee did uh, make some uh, some meaningful changes uh, on all three of the recommendations. First, with respect to the independent citizen redistricting commission, they wanted to add data on disparities in voter participation. That that was a. Uh, a figure that we actually did not have, and I want to thank uh, staff of our planning and development department that did extensive review of data from uh, the Tarrant County Elections Office, and we were able to determine the percentage uh, of voter participation in uh, minority neighborhoods relative to participation in the city generally. Uh, and uh, neither figure uh, is impressive. Now, in the, in the recent uh, uh, midterm elections, we saw some extraordinary participation rates. Uh, in some counties, uh, close to 50% participation. But participation in municipal elections historically has been uh, dismally low. Uh, in fact, if you, if you look at the last mayoral election, which was contested, we had about 8% uh, participation citywide, 8%. In the minority neighborhoods, that figure was uh, closer to 7%. Uh, neither figure is a, is a, is a bragging point. Uh, now the, uh, uh, the committee is recommending some very modest uh, uh, objectives of, of 9% uh, for minorities as well as for the general population, but it, I'm hopeful that it will be much greater than that. Uh, uh, but that's uh, one of the changes that the governance committee is recommending. With respect to the mission of the Human Relations Unit, they wanted to specify the formulation of an equity policy as a responsibility of the proposed assistant director or chief equity officer. This is a new authorized position that uh, we would be asking the city manager to recommend to the council uh, for creation through the uh, fiscal year 2020 uh, budget. Uh, and finally, uh, in respect to diversity training, the governor's committee wanted to add training not just for city employees, but also for elected and appointed officials, for the city council and for members of boards and, and commissions. So, you know, uh, Charles, uh, Rose, any others want to add to, to those comments? Uh, in respect to health, uh, uh, changes, uh, relatively minor changes in, in, uh, uh, in three recommendations. Health education and outreach, adding <coughs> access to active life extension is a, uh, list, it's a listing of a support organization. Uh, active lifestyles, uh, citing examples of wellness programming, and again, adding Texas AgriLife as a support organization. And finally, under healthy foods, adding the U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, as a partner. In housing, uh, uh, in health, uh, Glenda's not here. I don't know if there's anybody else from the health committee that they wish to comment. Health or housing? Uh, sir? Did you say health or housing? Uh, health, and, and housing is next. Uh, uh, housing uh, did make uh, two recommended changes. Affordable housing incentives policy adding a requirement that projects receiving incentives must accept rental assistance vouchers to, to make those vouchers more broadly available citywide. And in respect to resident awareness of housing resources, including uh, certain specified topics within the scope of fair housing education. And, and, and Katie's here if you wish to elaborate. No, I just thought I misheard you. I thought no, you I'm sorry. Asked asked I meant to say help. Uh, help. Uh, uh, and finally, transportation. Uh, they uh, wanted to specify in the transportation equity policy and five year action plan that the policy would be uh, a part of a component of the city's overall equity policy, which would be formulated uh, by the uh, human relations unit.
So that is a summary of the committee uh, revisions. Uh, and uh, Madam Chairman, I'm happy to entertain any questions. So if, if not, then I'd, uh, I'd, I'd like to turn your attention to the, to the next document uh, under tab one. And that is what we're calling the November 6th uh, draft of your recommendations. That is, it is virtually identical to the September 24th draft with the exception of those revisions that we've just described on the previous page. So that is the November 6th draft, and it would be appropriate, uh, should, uh, should there be no questions about it, uh, to entertain a motion uh, approving the November 6th draft as the final set of recommendations from the task force. I'll make that motion. Does anybody have any questions? I just want to make sure this is the, uh, the recommendations we make to the council. Yes. Uh, the These are the substantive recommendations, and in a moment, I'd like to walk through uh, the, uh, the slides that you will be using to convey these recommendations to the council. Okay. Um, clearly, the mayor and the city manager have seen these recommendations. Oh, yes. Um, I guess I was naive or a little surprised about that um, since we haven't presented them. Right. Yeah, and they weren't really finished yet. Well, there are the, the there are the draft recommendations that were circulated to the to the public. They, they saw the same things that the that the public saw. So I have to say that what we heard here tonight sounded to me an awful lot like a rebuttal and a um, an explanation of why what we're recommending isn't necessary. It's just an observation, <laughs> not a judgment. And, and my two for that are because um, the recommendations have been reviewed by a certain group, a group of folks. And so we've even seen, received letters or at least emails from someone that was recommending something different from what we had proposed already. And so my concern is as we go forward, are we really truly going to support what these recommendations are, at least really consider them when someone else has already viewed them and, and they've got their opinion circulating on it. Is that a question? Uh, That's the statement. Okay. And uh, if you'd like to expound on it, then... I'd, I'd be happy to, 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 to attempt a response. Uh, and I think you'll see it in a moment uh, 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 that uh, we're asking that the task force co-chairs in presenting these recommendations to the to the council would be uh, echoing what they just said uh, earlier today, that uh, uh, action on uh, these recommendations is vitally important. Yeah, well, that's the question. Then. That's <coughs> it. Have these recommendations been reviewed and considered prior to us going forward to the council? They, they've by been another, considered another, uh, another, concurrent another with the public review. Yes, they've, they, they've, they're keenly interested in Well, in, I know about our public review. Yes. But I mean a special group of folks have viewed these and made recommendations. Because we did receive, Ty? Yes. We did receive where uh, there was a, 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 another opinion that was given to us of what we should actually do. Well, we did have, uh, well, the co-chairs did meet with a group of business leaders. Uh, twice uh, to to get uh, uh, to get their thoughts about the draft recommendations. Of the and we're, can we're talking about cultural. We're talking about racial, uh, cultural diversity disparity. Was there anybody in that? Was that was that was that a, a group of what Fort Worth looks like that they met with? It was a group of business leaders, and it did not reflect the diversity of the community. Okay. Which they recognized immediately because yes. of the 25 people around that table. Mm -hmm. They were all white men. And they so recognized was, that. So, and, and they recognized that. But, but the other thing is, uh, <clears throat> to, to your, your other points, uh, in fact, I spoke at First Methodist Church yesterday to ask about our process. And I told them that we, as a, as a body, were almost done. I mean, today we would make our final recommendations. Then it's going to be up to them. I mean, some of us would stay involved, obviously. But the impression, I, and, I, and I didn't get from the mayor, the, the, the feedback I've been getting from the city, and I may be wrong, 
and I don't think I'm naive, but, I'm, but I could be wrong, is that they're willing to go with what we're recommending. Now they gotta figure out how to do that. And we're, as I said before, we're not demanding anything. These are recommendations. Well, I know there's power, but there's money, but there's votes. Yes, I know and that too. so when you look at that, and you think about the 25 business representatives that are, that are there, that are previewing this stuff, if we, even before the citizens got a chance to look at it, uh, no. I just hope that everybody's really willing to step forward and look, really look at it to make you know serious changes. Well, I, I think what, what <coughs> we have to make sure is, and I think we've been trying to do that, and tell me if I'm wrong, yeah. uh, everything we've done has been on the website. Yes. We've been trying to tell people that they can go over there and, and see it. Uh, and I told them, because after t tonight, when will this be on the website? Probably tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, this will be on the website. Anybody who wants to see it can read it, judge it, go to it. And again, I don't expect the city to do everything that I want. Uh, but I, if they do less, I mean severely less than what we're recommending, <coughs> this city's in more trouble than we could imagine. And I, I just have faith that they won't do that. Now again, I haven't had any private conversations with the mayor or the city manager, but I publicly stated before, if they ignore this, if they just put it on the shelf, as you say, and ignore it, we got a serious problem before. And one of the things that we were promised at the very beginning is that this would not be put on the shelf. That's why the four of us committed to saying that we would agree to co-chair. Walter, one of the comments I'd make, and, and, and I hear what you're saying, uh, <clears throat> I'd just like to make a comment about <clears throat> everybody having seen the recommendations. I was sharing with the gentleman over there a minute ago about his uh, response letter. You know, we, we said at the very beginning, we mean to everybody in this room, that we want to be transparent. The meeting we had with the business leaders was intentional because what it does is it says this is what we see as issues as identified by the community not by us but by the community from all the meetings we had what what are your thoughts nobody in that room said anything negative it was how do we how do we plan to do this and that and one of the comments that, that i made to the business leader was we you control somebody's employment you control their life because they're gonna. They are in a in a situation where you have a lot of influence. What are your commitments? We had um, Burlington Northern Santa Fe, for instance, talk about how they were hiring people with backgrounds. They want to help, and when you look at the room, you're talking about companies that have 26,000, 30,000 employees. You can't go out and, and impact the whole community the way this will without getting input from all levels. They're not going to come to these meetings. They, they won't come to the community conversations. But we wanted to get them engaged <clears throat> because they will have a critical role in helping us to drive to execution what we put together. So no one has tried to veto anything. In fact, they were asked to present their comments about some of the recommendations that are out on the internet. They've always been out there. Everything we've done is posted. So, you know, you had people say, well, maybe we could do a little bit more here. Maybe we could promote hiring a little bit differently and all. So I, I was really encouraged by it. Right, and that, uh, we also got the buy-in from Fort Worth ISD on the police cadet program. And TCC. And TCC, and UTA. I was just responding to the fact that we're talking about transparency. Yes. Yeah. And that was to everybody here was probably not transparent that that, that actually happened. But no, we were transparent we to the group. We talked about that. Yeah. We talked about the meeting yeah. with the community leaders. Right. Yes, we did okay. talk about. That. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I don't. I don't sense yeah, anything. I actually, kind of <clears throat> your last comment said I think it hit it. It was. I, I noticed the same thing that we're talking about, but I didn't see it as part of a hierarchy. I. I saw it as getting another group, almost like a focus group or a separate group. It's the, and that's, it's 
that accurate? Yes. 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 Yeah, well, that's yes. exactly, that's exactly what, what it was. was. Yeah. <clears throat> Not part of a, you needed this before you could go on to this. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Had to have a, a venue where we could get their input. Mm -hmm. But I did, I did have to say, the initial reaction <laughs> yes. as far as the makeup, but okay. it is good to have business look at it. We want to buy in from all groups yes. on all levels. But to, to finish uh, my attempt to answer uh, uh, Mr. Danzi's question, uh, one, of the, one of the recommendations that I think the, the co-chairs will be making uh, to the council uh, in December is to have the city manager uh, go back to the council in, within three months, uh, by March of, of 2019, uh, with a game plan for implementing all of the recommendations from the task force uh, and, and highlighting uh, those recommendations that have been most prominent in your discussions. And I don't think any of the recommendations have, have, have drawn any more attention uh, than has civilian oversight of the police department. And so... Uh, and citizens registered. And, and redistricting and, and, uh, uh, and, and a handful of others. But uh, uh, to give you an example, uh, within the last uh, few months, the, the city manager uh, asked a, a consultant, the Matrix Consulting Group from, uh, from California that's working with us on a study of uh, uh, police and code compliance staffing. Uh, he asked them to amend their scope of work uh, to add uh, a study on civilian oversight by the police department. This group, a matrix consulting group, happens to be uh, uh, national experts uh, on police staffing and on civilian oversight. And uh, they are prepared to present an impartial study. Uh, and I've spoken with the, the principal, the, the, the CEO of, of matrix consulting. He says he, he's prepared to, to support a civilian review board or any other model that the city may select. Uh, uh, and so we're prepared to, to proceed immediately in studying uh, a civilian oversight models, uh, looking at the, the three major models that are described in your recommendations and considering whether one of those three models or some hybrid of those models uh, would be most appropriate for, for Fort Worth. Uh, and involving uh, various community leaders, uh, uh, business leaders, faith leaders, uh, folks in minority neighborhoods who are most directly affected by uh, the inequity, in involving them in the process of evaluating these different models and working with the police associations uh, and, the, and the police uh, 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 co uh, command uh, staff to, to recommend uh, a civilian oversight program that would be appropriate for our community. Uh, what's going to be the result? I don't know. That would be up to this group, working uh, with the city manager. That's, that's an example that I want to give of how I believe the city manager is committed to acting upon these recommendations. Uh, I, I, th I think he intends to pursue it to the extent that it's, uh, that it's feasible. Now, what, one of the things that, that this three-month report would call for would be an assessment of how the recommendations in the aggregate would uh, affect the, the fiscal year 2020 budget. Now, we have a preliminary assessment that's been uh, prepared by our, our budget staff, and we'll, we'll show it to you in, in a moment. Uh, it, it, it appears under, under tab two. Uh, but we'll want to look at it more closely. The city manager would want to determine how much of that funding he's prepared to recommend in the 2020 budget. Uh, so he's, he's committed to do that. So I, I am confident that he's, he's going to take these, uh, uh, these recommendations seriously. Uh, I, I think di different people can hear different things. I, I heard him say he's prepared to advance it. And, and, the, and, and I just need to, to interrupt just for a minute. You know, when you talk about what they said, it's because they've been reading these documents. And what I heard was they're already thinking about what actions they're going to take. How positive is that? I mean, and they, with the uh, with the community leaders, the bigger employers, if you will. What else would we? How else could we have um, could pull them? How else could we have gotten their input? What would you have recommended we do to get those individuals' input and feedback on the recommendations? 
So if there was a better way to do it, I mean, we well, we let me say this. My my question was the timing of it. When the timing, when 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 it was done. Uh, because we hadn't fully completed our <coughs> recommendation. So, but again, uh, y'all have seen things that I haven't seen, so I understand that. So, well, and it's I all think, been stamped right Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ma'am? It's all been stamped right. Yeah. It's all been a draft since the beginning. Right. So it's not fine with you. The, you're the chair, if you're fine with it, I'm fine with it. I, you know, and I'm pretty picky. Yeah. You and I, I'm pretty picky. So, I, I mean, we don't have to keep you know, going over this, yeah. uh, I asked a question. Uh, I know something uh, you know, that, that wasn't mentioned here did happen. And so I just want to check and see, uh, just to, to put it out there that we want to make sure we follow through because uh, I, I received, just like probably you received an email, which was to the contrary of what we had put and given the reasons why we should have this or that sure. already. And so, and it, it came from an important person in the city. And so, uh, what, what specifically are you talking about? Because I don't know. Fernando, you the one that passed the information on to me, so. I'm trying to remember, Walter. Just, uh, just we'll tell us, put it out there. What was it? What was it, yeah. There, there was, there, there was uh, the chief sent something out to us. The chief did send some comments uh, with his own <coughs> recommendations about civilian oversight, and, and I don't think the committee agreed with it. <coughs> and what the committee put forth is not what the chief is recommending. Uh, I think uh, I think we also I, circulated I, I, I some comments it. from uh, uh, former Mayor Kenneth Barr. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Barr had his own views about civilian oversight. Well, uh, that's, that were not well, consonant. That's, that's, a, that's a powerful letter. Mm -hmm. I'm from a former yeah. mayor. That, that that he was, he was part of this group that of business. That has the audience of the 25 yeah. guys that are. That's that's my point. Okay. And so I'll leave it at that. And so we we, we are confident that this is going to be taken for what it is, and it's going to be seriously looked at as we move forward. So I'm fine with it. You've already you brought that out, and that's the point that I wanted to make. Sure. And so sure. when you have an audience like that, and you have that kind of power in the room, and you have somebody that's powerful that has a concern or a, 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 a different idea of what this community has, uh, and has already put it in writing, uh, you cannot tell me that the rest of them haven't seen it. And the idea is there. So again, we are going to, as a team and as a, as the leadership here, you're going to we're going to make sure that these recommendations go forward and be transparent in the approach as we go as we move forward, so that those kind of things where one individual can't determine whatever happens. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, right. Absolutely. And, 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 and as in place of the former mayor, I mean, some of us quickly understood that he has a relationship with the POA, the police. So. Well, I don't want to get into all of that. No, no, so. that, no, I'm going to say that, I mean, he, he's had power, and he may still have some power. It didn't affect me, because... Mm -hmm. it, it, it didn't affect any of us. So... Either. Because we're still wanting to go with the recommendation that um, your committee had to put together and support that. I'll tell you what, we need the help of the people in that room. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that they were willing to, cons to look at the recommendations, and they hadn't, hadn't all seen them. We asked them to look at it and give us some feedback from their level. And they all did, and I was just really impressed with the commitment they made and how and into this, this process. process they were. And they came and met the first time when we introduced the concept and needed their input. Then they came back again when we invited them. I would, I would like to move forward. It seemed like that. They would. really okay. did a good job. But, but, and we reported that. <laughs> and we reported <laughs> that to the script. So that's the that's 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 I'd like to yeah. move forward. Yeah, I'm going right. to give them credit. Okay. Though. They did a Fernando, good job. Fernando, you said that we needed a motion. It would be appropriate, I think, for Rabbi Blue to make a motion. Rabbi Bloons made a motion to accept the final recommendations uh, dated November 6, 2018. Do we have a second? Well, all in favor? Okay. Next on our agenda is review and uh, okay. Does any oppose any? <laughs> I think we saw eyes from everybody. Okay. What is We're uh, not until December 4th. <laughs> uh, review and approval of final report to the City Council, Fernando. And that's under tab two, as was mentioned earlier. I'd like to, I'd like to share with you uh, in abbreviated form. Uh, the draft recommendation um, that the, the task force will be presented to the council on the 7th of the
And I'll run through these slides quickly, uh, perhaps uh, pausing at, at a few that are uh, significant. Uh, the, uh, the intent is, in, in this briefing is to review a background on the appointment of the task force for, for those who, who may need a reminder or who haven't been involved. Uh, review highlights for the May 1st interim report. Uh, that was a, a significant uh, event uh, that I, I think uh, served to establish the credibility of this task force. Uh, uh, until that time, I don't think a lot of folks considered this task force to be doing, didn't know what this task force was doing. Uh, and I think when you presented a report on disparities, uh, the extent of those disparities and, and the cause of those disparities, and how we then intended to proceed toward recommending actions addressing those disparities, I think it caught the attention of the community that this task force really was doing something meaningful. And I think it's uh, appropriate to, to review uh, some of that background uh, on this occasion. Then the, the, the heart of the report is presenting a summary of the findings and recommendations. Uh, and, and finally, discussing fiscal impact, municipal services, uh, and next steps uh, toward implementing uh, the recommendations. And so, so, some background on the appointment going back to June of 2017, uh, when the council called a special meeting on this topic. Uh, the, uh, the resolution that was adopted on August 1st, uh, 2017. Uh, this is the, the composition. We currently have uh, 22 uh, members of the task force, uh, four co-chairs and, and 18 others. You'll, you'll see your, your names on, on the slide. Uh, we want to explain why the, the task force went back to the, the city council and requested an extension of your deadline. You originally had a one-year deadline to complete your work by August 1st of, of 2018. You asked for more time uh, through uh, December because you wanted to uh, involve a broader segment of the public uh, in, a, in a broader range of activities. Uh, you also wanted to broaden the scope uh, of your study. As you'll recall, when you, when you were initially asked to undertake this work, you were only supposed to oversee a, a few community conversations, not hold any town hall meetings, uh, not have a lot of the public engagement that you actually undertook, and you were only going to look at uh, a few municipal services. You were not going to look at the broad range of issues that you eventually looked at. But you decided to hold a town hall meeting. That was not in your charge. And in that first town hall meeting, you heard from folks speaking with a great deal of passion about their lives in Fort Worth and how they their lives, the quality of life that they experienced in Fort Worth may be very different from the quality of life that we experience because of inequities that are trivial to race and culture. And I think this task force was moved by what you heard. And you said, we're going to look much more broadly at all of these, and you decided to establish six committees, eventually seven, looking at the sources of all those inequities. So you, you undertook a much greater task than the city council originally asked you to undertake, all to your credit. Uh, and so you needed more time to finish that work. You also wanted to have a more thorough public review of your draft recommendation. That has taken weeks, if not months, to undertake. Uh, we undertook a lot more leadership training, including training of, of interested citizens across Fort Worth. Uh, and therefore, you, you requested the extension which the City Council uh, granted. So just to review of, of that background, a uh, review of the top ten issues that were identified uh, through the, the community conversations. Also, uh, a review of, uh, of some of the major uh, uh, findings from, from frequently expressed comments uh, that were made uh, uh, in the public meetings, that the perception that the city was doing very little or nothing uh, to improve race relations, racial equity, and cultural awareness. Uh, the nature of the problem is systemic, structural, uh, institutional racism, and that we have failed to acknowledge the problem, uh, thereby uh, compounding it, making uh, uh, victims of racism feel uh, unheard and, and uh, causing perpetrators uh, to feel empowered. And the need to continue uh, uh, these discussions. The public meetings to review the draft recommendations. And then, uh, then we have a chance to get into the, the, the seven uh, uh, committee uh, topics uh, in some depth. 
and the, the, the co-chairs have agreed to split them up as they did before in the initial findings. And so we'll ask uh, each co-chair uh, to, to present uh, at least two of the topics. Uh, and with respect to each of the topics, we'll be asking the co-chair briefly to cover the extent of disparities, the causes of those disparities, to focus primarily on the recommendations of the task force. That's, this is where we want the, the co-chairs truly to, to focus their attention. What are the recommendations, the 22 recommendations? Uh, and then finally, touch briefly on success then. What are the, uh, the ways in which we are uh, going to measure the reductions uh, in inequities over the next five years and into the future? And so, uh, uh, moving uh, quickly, uh, we'll ask uh, uh, Ms. Biggins uh, to cover criminal justice, again, extent and causes of disparity to recommendations. She'll focus on civilian oversight, the cadet program, and diversity within the police department, and some of the measures uh, by which we determine uh, our success. And we'll then ask Ms. Biggins to cover uh, economic uh, uh, development, uh, disparities, uh, the recommendations, and then the success measures. Rabbi Bloom has agreed to cover education and governance. And so the education recommendations, the governance recommendations. And then uh, uh, Mr. Sanders has agreed to cover the three remaining topics, health, housing, and transportation. So we'll go through those. Again, focusing on the recommendations themselves. And uh, we'll, we'll wrap up uh, with Ms. Damahar. She will cover uh, fiscal impact, municipal services, and next steps. So, uh, this is our a preliminary assessment uh, by the budget office uh, that it would cost uh, close to $3 million in next year's budget to implement all the recommendations uh, that the task force has made, three million dollars. Uh, uh, in uh, in retrospect, I think you'll uh, you'll agree that the, this is a relatively modest uh, uh, cost estimate, uh, but it's still significant. And and whether the city can uh, can allocate three million dollars in, in a tight budget it remains to be seen. But uh, you you have uh, been very judicious. Uh, in uh, making recommendations, you have not made recommendations that would be irresponsible. You've been uh, quite responsible uh, in, in considering the cost of your recommendations. And so this is, I think, a very modest request, one that can be taken seriously by the council. And, and a much, I think much of the credit of the task force, you did not ask for the move. If you had recommended $50 million of, rec of, uh, of actions by the city council in the 2020 budget, I can, I can assure you it would have been done on the right. I think $3 million is, is, is doable. Uh, whether it be done or not, of course, uh, is a function of the, of the budget process. And then, then, yes? Do we have what percentage of the city budget $3 million is? It, it would be a very small fraction of the, of the general fund budget. The general fund budget uh, is about $700 million. So if you run the numbers, uh, that's, uh, that's less than half of 1%. I think expressing it that way is That's helpful. I just wrote that <laughs> with, with great minds. <laughs> Would it all be needed this year? I mean, this, this is this year. This, this is the, the first year. Now, there are other recommendations that, that will uh, involve expenditures in future years. But we just, we just took a snapshot of fiscal year 2020. And the, fisc, the first year recommendations <coughs> will be more costly than future years. So, so in just the one year, it's roughly it's less than half of 1% of the general fund budget adopted by the city council. <coughs> and then you see expenditures uh, to be incurred by other entities uh, across, including the Texas workforce and others, uh, uh, but, but mostly city forward. Also, it includes uh, uh, seven full-time authorized uh, staff positions to implement the recommendations, uh, scattered uh, among uh, 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 the different uh, departments, economic development having <coughs> the biggest impact with three full-time positions. Uh, and then 20 part-time positions for the cadet program uh, in, the, in the police department. Uh, relatively inexpensive. Uh, you'll recall that 
we hired the National League of Cities uh, to uh, facilitate some of the training and also to conduct an analysis of disparities in the delivery of municipal services. Uh, they were not able to complete all the work that we uh, assigned to them, and therefore our staff has now completed that work. It is not done, it has not been reviewed uh, even internally, much less by the task force. So that is work that remains to be done, uh, and we'd like to complete it within this 30, uh, this three month uh, time frame, uh, within which we're asking the city manager uh, to report back to the council on implementation of the, of the recommendation. Uh, so we're asking Ms. Ms. Navajar to talk about uh, the, the work that remains to be done, which is uh, only a brief mention. Fernando? Yes. Did we pay for them to do any work? And if yes, there's we, money that's left, can that be put into the budgetary? We paid them $100,000, and uh, the language of the contract was broad enough that they could claim to have done the work we asked them to do. We were not satisfied with their performance. Uh, we reported our unhappiness to the CEO of National League of City, uh, but they met the minimum uh, requirements set forth in the signed contract and we had no legal basis to withhold payment. Uh, we, we actually asked them to, to complete their work and they said they had done uh, what they had uh, been obligated contractually to do. We weren't, we weren't happy with that response, but legally we didn't have a basis upon which to withhold payment. And we didn't want it to break. That's unfortunate, because I imagine they could have gotten other clients, other cities from doing that work, but yes. that's their loss. Uh, and and well, we, we decided well, not to pursue any litigation. Okay. Uh, we decided the easier just to finish the work and not, uh, right. not quarrel over the, uh, the, 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 uh, the work that remains to be done. I'm going to create an organization if the city wants to contract. All right. <laughs> and, then, and then next steps. We're asking the city council on December 11th, which is the subsequent uh, city council meeting, uh, to adopt a resolution accepting the task force findings and recommendations and authorizing the city manager to proceed in implementing the recommended strategies and actions. So that's a resolution that will appear on the December 11th agenda of the City Council. Uh, we would uh, encourage those of you who can to be there on the 11th uh, to, to remind the Council about uh, um, uh, their, uh, their support for your efforts. And then by March 2019, uh, at the end of that three month period, we'd be asking the, the Council to receive a report from the City Manager on the status of implementation, including particular emphasis on uh, some of the more prominent recommendations. Provisions for civilian oversight of the police department. We want that to be priority number one. Tell us what you're going to do to provide civilian oversight of the police department and get the council to act on whatever recommendations the city manager by March were prepared to make. Uh, I, I can't think of a, of a more effective way to force some kind of action some kind of decision by the council, are you going to do it or not, within three months. Uh, appointment of a charter review task force, now you, you heard uh, Mayor Price, uh, I think she, I, I think it's fair to say she, she was less than 100% ready to proceed with the recommendations of our discipline. Uh, and and you're, not, you're not recommending specifically that, that we, require a redistricting commission. You're only recommending that we appoint a charter review task force to study this issue and come back uh, with their own recommendations on the feasibility and desirability of an independent redistricting commission. I think that was a wise way to, to frame it. Uh, uh, and I think if, if, uh, if you get an impartial group of citizens studying the issue, they may very well come up with the same recommendation uh, that you wanted to make about creating this commission. Uh, so that's one of the action steps. Reorganizing the human relations unit. To have some entity in city government that will be driving the implementation of your recommendations as part of the mission. Right now we have the human relations unit. It's, it's headed by uh, Andy Rush. Uh, and most of their time, most of their resources are, are devoted 
uh, to investigating uh, claims of discrimination with respect to housing and employment and, and public accommodations. They also staffed the Human Relations Commission. Uh, Abuda, you chaired that commission. Uh, Rosa, others have served on the commission. Uh, for many years, Estrus led the commission. Uh, uh, and, uh, and so that's an important function, but we're, we're saying that the Human Rights uh, Unit can do a lot more to promote diversity and inclusion uh, and, and actually to drive implementation of your recommendations as their uh, principal charge. Uh, so that's an important uh, step. Completing that assessment of disparities in municipal services and finally having the city manager conduct his own uh, assessment on the impact of these recommendations in the 2020 budget and determine what he's prepared, prepared to recommend. Uh, I, I, I think if you know Mr. Cook, you know he is uh, uh, a, a budget hawk. He is uh, uh, very deliberate about the budget, just as Mr. Boswell was when he was our city manager. Uh, he's very careful about what goes into the budget. And he's going to scrutinize all of the, all of the task force recommendations to determine how much of those uh, that three million dollars he's prepared to include in his recommended budget. Uh, so, so we're asking him to, to, to make an assessment and report on it uh, by March. Uh, and then by December 2019, uh, to have the city manager uh, actually publish a first annual progress report uh, for, the, uh, for the community to see what we've actually done to move the needle on the various disparities that you have identified. So this is a, a rundown of the of the recommendations uh, and, the, and the, the report that the task force will be giving to the council on um, Tuesday, December 4th. Does anyone have any questions? Charles? Is it possible when this assessment of disparities, disparities in municipal services yes. is completed, yes. that that could indicate there's further budgetary impact it could. to close that. It could. So that would add to the three. It would add to the cost. It would, yes. Good question. Anyone else? Jennifer? When, I, I don't know what our future holds as far as the group and go forward of this group, but I guess my question is when, can we be kept apprised mm -hmm. of the milestones as they continue? Mm -hmm. I think that we can make a recommendation sure. to, especially to date, uh, our city manager, is that he updates this task force mm -hmm. on the progress that's been made. We've even gone so far as to create a, a, a report card, like a dashboard. Mm -hmm. So all of the uh, reductions or increases, depending upon which uh, recommendation, all of that will go into a, a, a dashboard where it's monitored. Uh, by the city council members and of course by the city manager it's on the and so that's that's there it'll be unique and to it'll, this particular yeah. mm -hmm. this particular work and it'll be on the website as well so that the community can take a look at that as well and, and my hope is that everybody on this group will stay engaged uh, i don't plan to <laughs> i'm just being honest but uh we hope you will but I'm, I'm hoping the rest of you will be paying attention. And the only reason I say that is because I've been dealing with this for 40 years, y'all, and, and, and I'm tired. So I, I want to get through it, but particularly you millennials, no. uh, or whatever time, uh, I'm, expecting, uh, I'm expecting you to hold the council and you know, your feet to the fire. And, 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 I, and again, I'm, and I mentioned some of those recommendations to the first uh, Methodist Church yesterday. They applauded it, including, and especially, I mean, they applauded most of, on the redistricting commission, because they understand, we just got through an election, so they understand the importance of that. So I think once it gets communicated to, to our public, they will be involved. Uh, so I hope most of you will be as well. And if, if you heard uh, uh, Mayor Price uh, earlier this evening, uh, she did say she's giving thought to how we might uh, uh, bring together the right folks to oversee implementation of your recommendations. And I expect that she'll be calling on some of you uh, to be part of that effort. Thank you, especially because we have a new election coming up. 
too, uh, in the spring, right? Uh -huh. okay. and, and they should be made well aware that this should be an issue in that election. Right. And the community should bring that up as part of the election process. Okay. Hey, sir. Sir. Question to clarify, did I just hear Barbara Sanders say he doesn't plan to stay involved in this? Yeah. <laughs> did I just hear that? That's what he said, but you know, he can't be in the room that believes that. Yeah. Raise your hand. Yeah, I believe it. section open so that we're all together okay uh, so let Fernando or Michelle know that and in closing remarks I'd like to say you know thank you all again for all the hard work that you put forward we've approved these as our final recommendations and when we go out of this room let's stand together on those final recommendations so that we support each other's work and uh, time that's been put into these recommendations. Uh, ask Lily to give closing comments. Well, I would just add that uh, perspective is really the driver for a lot of things, you know. And, and so hopefully you feel that your uh, perspective on what the issues are and what some of the success, some of the recommendations are, other recommendations coming from your groups and from our group collectively are, uh, and that we own it. People see things differently, and, and that's okay. I think it's good to challenge each other, and, and if we beat you down, Walter, when you ask a question, sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't feel beat down. I good, good. I, I don't I remember. Don't good. That didn't happen. That's great. <laughs> but, you know, we just, I think sometimes, you know, we, we, um, we question each other, and we should. And that's what's made this, this group work so well together is because nobody's ashamed or afraid to step up and speak up. So um, I would just say thanks to everybody for the great job that you've done. I look forward to the presentation, and if you have any uh, time, please come and support us uh, as we present to the city council uh, in that pre-council meeting. It, it, it can be pretty intimidating, even for some people like us. So if we look out and see your faces in the audience, I'm sure we'll feel a lot better. So if you can come and then to the city council meeting to the uh, December 11th city council meeting. It's your work you've done and you deserve to be there and so uh, we need you there. Okay? Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I want to thank you all as well. Uh, I think the first, one of the first meetings I, I, I mentioned that the word peace in Hebrew has the root of it, unity. And I think we have brought uh, some unity together. Hopefully we can bring some peace to the community, but bringing peace to the community doesn't mean just quieting things down. It means bringing things forward. And hopefully we can move uh, the needle forward. But once again, we've taken one step, and this is not the end, but just the beginning, the springboard for the next step. So thank you all very much, and I look forward to all of us continuing as part of the city, part of the community, and as friends uh, moving things forward in the future. Well, I, I've said enough, so I'll simply say thank you to all of you, and especially to those that I got involved in this uh, process, and, and you, stood, you stuck with it, and I, I appreciate that very much. I just hope that you'll keep sticking with it. So, I'm done. Thank you all, but also, I mean, we always have some closing comments, but I'd like to hear from you all. Uh, Bob, would you like to say anything about your experience? You know, for me, I think being probably the, the, the newest newcomer to Fort Worth in the group, I've been here for a little over five years, it was, it was enlightening both 
in a difficult way of learning of the systemic disparities that do exist and the challenges that do exist in the attitude of many within the minority majority communities of the lack of attention that the city has given to their needs over the years. Uh, but at the same time, I was incredibly inspired by the many, many people that we met along this journey who are doing incredible work throughout the city, and particularly in the area that, that we did a di deep dive in within education. Uh, we have some real heroes in this city that we can be really proud of, and we just have to figure out the best way to elevate their work, highlight their work, leverage the people that really care to provide a better opportunity for all of our citizens and to the four chairs, Bob Ray, Rabbi, Rosa Lilly, to Fernando, to Estros, to all the city workers, thank you. Your commitment to the city, to all of our well-being has been truly uh, uh, appreciated and uh, it's been an honor to serve with all of my coaches. Uh, and and Robert, if I just, if I just might say something. One of the um, CEOs made a comment about how many things were being done well in Fort Worth. In fact, he said, we do so much and now we're getting this, we're not doing enough. And, uh, and I think the group kind of answered his question differently. Uh, they, they responded that we're not doing enough maybe. But, but my comment back was when one member of the community or members of the community feel that they aren't being heard, we have to help voice for them. Because what's important to them has to be important to all of us collectively. And when one of us is raised up, we're all raised up. So that was the response to him. But they, they weren't all bought in. I mean, they thought, why are we doing this? Because, um, you know, we do so much. Well, if the so much isn't enough, it's not enough, as you said. Todd? Oh, I won't. <laughs> say too much. I know we, have, we gave us the opportunity at the last meeting, but uh, you know, one thing that I'm just going to comment on to my final remarks is Bob Ray mentioned something that, uh, that I, I agree with him on. Uh, he has been in the fight for 40 years, and I think it's incumbent upon myself and my generation to take the baton that not only Bob Ray has, has started to do, but other individuals like uh, our four co-chairs, co uh, and a lot of individuals, and so uh, I, I know when I sit in this seat that I know not only represent myself, but I represent uh, my generation and the next wave of, of leaders within our community, and I don't take that away. So thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Sarah. Yes, I just think this group has been so much fun. It's like uh, an eclectic kind of a mosaic representation of our community, and it's been really exciting to see the dynamic of just us, you know, here, and I love that that there was an outreach to all the parts of the city, and that the marginalized were listened to, and there was really a voice given where maybe there hadn't been a voice before, and I hope that that continues. You know, I feel so inspired by I don't know just the unity and the partnership and um, the collegiality that we found amongst ourselves that we can um, continue to create that voice in the community to listen to everybody and to be heard. So it's been really an amazing honor. We're an incredible group of people. So proud of our mayor <coughs> for being proactive and calling a task force to take on such a difficult topic. Thank you for being here. Katie? Well, it's been a privilege to be part of this. I think for me, um, the town, the conversations in the town halls were the most important piece. And, I guess my biggest hope is that the people felt heard. Not that they just had a chance to talk, but that they felt heard. And I think one of the ways we prove that is by these recommendations. Um, part of me, you know, I feel like the woman I saw on one of the marches holding up a sign says, I can't believe I'm still protesting this stuff. And I've edited that comment. Um, but, um, I think like the rabbi, I, uh, I want to offer us a blessing that I hope will carry us forward as we go um, 
into the next months tracking this work. Um, May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. Amen. Amen. Can you send me that, please? <laughs> I can use it. I can? Uh, yes, it's been an honor and privilege to serve on the task force. Uh, it's been a great journey and a great learning experience for me as well, working alongside uh, some great people. I'm, I'm a strong believer that we can get a group of people with the same purpose and results and do some great things. So I'm proud of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did tell you some things that all that's been said. Bob Reagan, you made that comment. I actually thought of I have pictures of you helping, working, and talking to our young adults when I don't know whether it was uh, probably all the way back to when Mike Moncrief was county judge, <laughs> but definitely uh, Judge Vandegrift. I have lots of photos of, of you uh, working to talk to young adults about what they could be. And I still believe, I guess I'm foolish, uh, that we can be an impact. We have never had enough dollars, you know, to uh, provide the training, uh, the, the work experience that we would like, but we try to touch as many lives as we can. And actually this has made me think of more ways to connect with people and maybe stretch some of those dollars more. I love connecting things, it drives our staff crazy. But um, I have appreciated all the all the comments, and uh, I've learned a lot. I still learn a lot. Appreciate the co-chairs, and also a big, big thanks to the staff. I know all the committee work. I've always been impressed with the work they did in the interim between each of those uh, committees. So thank you, Jennifer. Um, so I thought you were going to hit me last, but that's okay. Um, Sorry. You know, I'd like to echo what my colleagues have said. You know, I've met some incredible people along the way, especially through some of the community conversations, some people that I would have maybe had the opportunity to meet and work with otherwise. Um, I think the biggest thing, is, as Judy was saying, you know, continue to learn, continue to challenge what we all think we know. Um, and then also, continuing on with what we know we know. And, you know, I'm a big believer in, in being the change that you want to see in the world, and so that's why when this came up and I reached out to Rosa and others to, to be on this, you know, some said I was a glutton for punishment, so I guess that makes me guilty as charged, but um, it's been a privilege to work with you all, um, and I'm going to echo the sentence again of the folks that, you know, thanking the staff, you know, we have some incredible folks that that we'll work with on the special on transportation and the housing committees. And I learned a lot and uh, look forward to seeing where this goes next. Charles. Well, this was the first thing I volunteered to do for the city since I retired 10 years ago. So I picked a doozy. Of the <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I appreciate the opportunity. I, I sold myself to Bob Ray and appreciate his confidence in picking me. Uh, I, I got to applaud the staff again. This was a hell of a process. I'm just telling you, somebody who's yes. been on the inside doing this, this was terrific work from Robert and Fernando and Michelle and Angie and everybody that contributed to this. Yes. It's just amazing. And, and we, yes. <laughs> and, uh, Without that very thorough process, so we do owe it to the staff and the leadership, the co-chairs, to make it possible. So, thank you all. Thank you. Gilbert. 
I, just the fact that I'm, I'm really encouraged by both the optimism and the passion in this group. I think it does reflect who Fort Worth is. Um, I am, of course, somewhat apprehensive as to whether, in fact, voices will be heard according to what's reflected here. I think a lot will depend on the voice that we project and obviously the passion that we do it with. But I have no doubt that the people here will encourage others to do the same. And as a result, I think with God's grace, we'll move forward. And with his mercy, we'll get it done. First of all, I want to thank you guys for the work that you've done. I know you've had to put up with a lot, and uh, putting up with me is not fun. <laughs> we love you. I'm going to ask. The I still remember our breakfast at Esperanza's. Ma'am, I remember our breakfast at Esperanza's. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I have, I've been uh, really encouraged by what we've done and what I see here. It also reinforces something that I began five years ago in Fort Worth ISD, and that was bringing this to Fort Worth ISD. And hopefully what they're getting out of it and doing with it will be doing the same thing with the city as a whole. The other point of it, I was encouraged too to hear the mayor talk about early childhood because at that same time we began early childhood and building facilities out because we did not have the capacity within our buildings to have it to take care of every single child in the district, which is something we have going on now and it's been expanded. So. Uh, I feel very encouraged by what we're doing. Uh, I think that we have the right people in place right now to make sure that we have the good follow through. And I know you've done an incredible job, and I really appreciate the fact that you really paid attention to us in the governance committee to make sure that you had a group that was set aside that was going to follow through on this all the way. And uh, I got to tell you, Charles, I really appreciate you because whether you understand it or not, what you did seven years ago when you talked about the other four words. It resonated throughout this whole process of making people start thinking. So you should be really uh, thanked as well. So yeah. thank you. Yes. I still refer that because uh, I still have a copy of that. And I still send that out to people to remember that inside the loop there is another Fort Worth that we have to take notice of. So thank you. Um, Again, thank you all and the staff, I mean, Fernando, y'all have done a layman's work, and I'd like to give you the last words for the staff. So. I really appreciate your leadership, your service to our community, and mm -hmm. you've actually uh, doubled our workload for the year. <laughs> 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 well, we're, we're actually great. <laughs> also, we have a little celebration in down the hall. Down the hall. Just to wrap up and say, it was a little something to say thank you and good show. I would like to say thank you to Gary, who has been here at every one of our meetings, um, putting the video together and getting it up by the next morning. So, transparency that we wanted, and he's been with us every month. So I appreciate your I appreciate your work on that. And also for the community that has been here with us in the meetings and uh, sitting behind. I know Jim has been here at every meeting and I want to thank you and all the others that have participated to come out to these. Because I know you probably have better things to do than to listen to all of us. <laughs> but uh, please stay, uh, go down to the hall and uh, we have just a little celebration to say thank you. And y'all, the citizens, y'all are welcome.